we can say that if we take uh, Darwin's theories as being correct, then we know that uh, we have evolved from the apes towards uh, humans, and now we have finally come to a point where we are uh, we're humanoid in shape, we have vertical spines, we are reasonably intelligent, we can push buttons on TV, uh, <laughs> drive cars, etc., etc. And what I'd like to do, I'd like to uh, draw maybe a, a, a little diagram, but don't worry, it's not very scientific. Let me draw a, what is called a bell curve, which looks somehow like this. It's being used in, in describing random events. And the way this works is the following, that if we assume now, let's, let's take a, a following situation. Take a little town that has maybe a thousand people in it. And we have this great desire to find out what the average height of people in this town is. And therefore we go out with a yardstick and start measuring these people. Well, we find that a very small, very few number of people will be, say, three feet tall. And a very, very few of them will be maybe seven or eight feet tall. The bulk of the population will be right somewhere here. That is the average or mean height of these people would be it's about five feet and six or eight inches, something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> so what we find here is that uh, this bell curve gives us a, a good picture of where most of the population is. That is what typifies uh, uh, the population. We can use this diagram also to describe evolution. The bulk of the population today is this intelligent more or less intelligent biped, all right? And uh, uh, with a vertical spine and who pushes the buttons on TV and drives a car, etc., etc. Now, there is some back throw. That is, there are some people here in this area, very few people who are still gorilla-like. That is the hairy. <laughs> they beat their chest when they see their neighbors and a few other things. And then we have other people who are here in this corner, very few of them, who are very highly developed because we say that evolution is now pushing mankind in this direction, away from the gorilla types towards the very highly evolved feet. At this point, we're here. What's going to happen maybe a million years from now, half a million years from now? This curve is going to shift. It's going to shift like this. That is, the bulk of the population will be very, very highly evolved. We have gone away altogether from the gorilla types, no more gorillas. And what we have here now is the average man is now the retarded person uh -huh. in evolutionary terms. The bulk of the population is extremely, very, very highly evolved. And the cutting edge of evolution here these are very, very highly evolved people. We can't even imagine what kind, what kind of person that will be. He may not have a physical body at all. What's the habitat, so to speak, of this group here? Well, you just go out and you find them. They're, they're all over the place. The habitat of this group here, what do you think? What do you think you find these people here, think? Um. <laughs> Uh, I, I suspect that you would find them in universities. You'd find the, you know, the people who are very bright, people who are uh, in the leading edge of professions. That, I mean, it's an intellectual thing. Well, I suggest that you find them in mental hospitals, in nut houses. And the reason for that is that these people, they live in a different reality, in a reality which, which is very changed and Few of them are adapted to live in this reality, so naturally they can't function very well. So the only safe place, only good place for them would be the mental hospital, unless they can integrate their, their, their different view of reality with their daily lives. Now, if they can integrate it, then we have people like, like Newton, like Darwin, like, like, uh, like uh, you mean, so Faraday. These are the so-called geniuses. The, the thing that I'm not certain that we have talked about is what is it that is evolving? Let's put it this way. The nervous system is the thing that is evolving and the nervous system is supported by a skeleton of bones and muscles and tissue, etc., etc. Now, 
uh, the nervous system is that thing that gives us the picture of our realities. That is, our realities, that reality which you see all, all around you, the flowers and the chairs and the microphones and the uh, teacup, is given to us by our senses. See, yeah. We don't see light which is beyond UV and beyond infrared. Uh, we hear only a limited uh, scale of vibrations, like, for instance, we hear anywhere from 52 to 20,000 maximum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other words, all our senses are limited. So, with well, these limited senses, we naturally are seeing through a very narrow kind of tube mm -hmm. or very narrow slit in the total reality there is. Mm -hmm. Now, as you're evolving, what happens is that that slit opens up, opens up more and more and more. So you see more and more of that reality, and we assume that we see different realities. They're not very different realities, but rather an, a very extended, broad view of one very large reality. The Bible mentions maybe four to six colors maximum. Yeah. That is what people saw just there maybe 4,000 years ago. Uh, nowadays, we see hundreds and thousands of colors. That is, our visual system has evolved. Mm -hmm. Our fellow mammals, like cows and horses, see only black and white. Uh -huh. So this is one example of the evolution of the nervous system. The senses are an extension of our nervous system. Our eyes, our ears, etc., are an extension of our brain. Uh -huh. So we can take an example. Say, uh, oh, let's take a simple example. The family sitting at dinner table and uh, say that the kid, maybe 15 years old, 16 years old, and he looks up and suddenly he says to his mother, hey, Ma, look at there's, there's uh, our dead grandmother is standing in the corner. <laughs> oh. Mother looks around and says, no, oh, uh, there's no grandmother there. And she says, well, kiddo, you, there's something wrong with you. You need help. You're crazy. So you're crazy. So yeah. she takes him off to the friendly neighborhood psychiatrist and same thing happens. Psychiatrist will ask him, well, kiddo, what do you see? Well, you know, see, well, don't you see, doctor, over there in the corner, don't you see this person standing there? Well, the psychiatrist turns around, no, there's no such thing. Well, and then um, psychiatrist says, oh, young fella, you're in trouble, and then he writes out a little prescription for a little thorazine or electroshock or whatever, and pretty soon, in a matter of two weeks, kid is back in shape, very normal. No longer sees the No longer sees anything. Yeah. <laughs> so the process has been reversed. This is called a psychotic episode uh, or acute schizophrenic break or whatever it is. And what you would say is that there's a good chance that that kid is seen. Very the good chance that the kid has a spontaneous opening of his senses. Uh -huh. So that the evolution has been rushed up, or right. hurried up? Yeah. No. This actually happens. There are techniques to do this. But uh, the Eastern uh, uh, people, the, the yogis, have developed systems to, to do this, to push the nervous system rapidly. But it happens very often spontaneously without uh, someone trying to do anything about mm -hmm. it. And it just happens. And then, naturally, in the olden days, these kinds of things used to be called miracles. Most people... Uh, well, I'm talking about the soul, it's a kind of non-physical thing, highly theoretical. And so when you go to church, you take this soul out of the closet and polish it up a little bit, and then you go to church and you are one with your soul. Then you come back and put it back in the closet till next week. So uh, that's about the idea of a normal person, the soul. But actually, that's not the case. I mean, we don't have souls, but it's just the other way around. The soul has us. So that is that thing that evolves, the permanent, eternal thing is the soul, and the body is a kind of disposable thing. That uh -huh. is, you know, you, you use a body uh, like a car for 80,000 miles, 100,000 miles, and you chunk it, and that's it, you get another one. So it's the, the driver is the soul who, who uses the body for a while, and then he runs it into the ground, and he gets another one sooner or later. The soul is the repository of information that we gather during life. Well, I'll tell you, maybe we should draw another diagram. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Physical bodies are here, another physical body, another physical body, and this is Joe, and this is Jim, and this is Sarah, etc. Now, clearly, on the phys this is the physical level, yeah? Now, on this physical level, we all separate. You sit there, and I sit here, and we're all separate. Now, let's draw another level. This level is, is slightly higher, and let's call this the level of the soul, yeah? Well, there will be some mingling here. Let's, let's draw this person as extending to practically infinity this way. Now, look what happens. At the physical level, we are separate. We are separate, and there's this much distance between mm -hmm. us. Let's say that on the soul level, this person extends this much, and the other person gets slightly mixed in with him. That is, the souls are, in a way, in touch with each other. Okay, they overlap, these two lines. Now, let's go now to a higher level, and let's call this, uh, say, the level of the higher self, which is kind of a boss of that soul. Uh, there, what we find is that this fellow's higher self extends this much, and the other fellow extends this much. There is more overlap between them. On the very highest level, which is the high spiritual level, we are basically overlapping completely. Everybody is overlapping everybody else. In other words, everything and everyone is everywhere. In other words, we have become omnipresent. This is a state of highly spiritual perfected beings, or gods you may call them. Okay? Okay, and so that we exist on all of those simultaneously. On all of those simultaneously, so then, but we are not uh, aware it, of them. In, in, in your view, then, if we, when we see each other as separate entities, that's only seen on one plane of reality. Correct. And so whether we like it or not, we're all evolving towards godhood. But, you know, it takes eons, so don't hold your breath. Is that the purpose of evolution? Naturally. Because at that point, you start understanding how the system works. And one of the good things about the system is that the system wants to teach you about itself. Mm -hmm. What does it's it a good system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does it want to teach you? Well, if you are, if you are omnipresent and you're all-knowing, that is the state which the system wants you to be in. Because the system is an intelligence or information gathering system. And it's all of, also freely distributing that information. At some point, we will have these experiences of elevated consciousness in which higher realities are not only seen but lived. And ultimately, we come into perfection. Whether we like it or not. Can we speed that up by doing it? Yeah. Well, you use the, the meditative techniques which push the nervous system a lot faster than the normal evolutionary rate. Mm -hmm. Those okay. techniques are available, but uh, you don't need to do it's anything. It's going to happen anyway. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. What a view. It's a very big, bright view. <laughs>